Mmm, soil it for lunch. Man, don't know what I would do without it. We're about to start on a very exciting video series. We're going to do a prescribed burn on the homestead. A prescribed burn is when you do a, an intentional burn. It can be on grassland, pasture, it can be in brush, it can be slash piles, whatever. Things that you need to get rid of. And the conditions right now are perfect. We did a test burn yesterday and everything went well. We have really we good high humidity, uh, cool temperatures, calm winds, and it's just ideal. We have some massive, massive um, uh, piles of slash in the lower pasture that have been sitting there for two seasons now, and they're, they're ready to go. So today we're gonna get, be getting everything ready. Um, I thought I'd go over with you some of the tricks or the tools of the trade, and we'll take the uh, fire skid unit down to the lower pond, we'll pull a draft, to make sure everything's prepped, and then I believe on Friday, um, we're going to do the prescribed burn, and that's we'll do a full-on video on that too. So let's jump into the tools uh, and um, and get started. So before we get started, please, for the love of my sanity, stop with the chains. Please stop with the chains. In this area, logging companies, skidders, they run chains year-round. It protects the tires. It gives additional grip if you're working in swampy or boggy areas. Please, please, I'll take them off when I'm out of the mud. We're down in the lower pasture. We're axle deep mud down there. I need the chains. The chains are on there. They're not hurting anything. It's, they're, they're just fine. So, please. Okay. This is a drip torch. This is a tool. Uh, this is probably something that very few of you have ever seen before uh, that is used to ignite fires and prescribe burns. Um, I'm very, for very fortunate to have one. It was given to me by one of my subscribers uh, who works, I think he worked for the Forest Service and they were decommissioning them uh, and getting new ones. So uh, I want to take this apart and show you how this works. This is a very interesting tool. All right, the drip torch is inside of it is a special mix of fuel. And it's, um, boy, that's going to be tight there, isn't it? I put it tight because I didn't want it leaking. It's 75% diesel or kerosene, diesel fuel, 25% gasoline. And that, the Forest Service has determined, is about the perfect mix uh, for drip torch. So here you can see it's stowed in its uh, non-use non, non, uh, configuration. All right, so if we look here. There's a brass cap right there, All right? So we'll take this off, and this brass cap is seals it when, it when you're transporting it. You take this off, and this is just a place to store it right there. So that's where you put the cap. Now, that opens the, the portal. You can see the screen in there uh, for the fuel to run out. There's a heavy rubber gasket in there, and then this brass ring goes on here like this. You're going to like this here. And then you orient it this way. Tighten this up. Good and tight. I don't want that leaking fuel oil on the fire. This here is a vent. And this is how we're going to adjust the flow of the drip torch. Now let's light it up. As wildland firefighters, we would traditionally light these with a what we call a fusee, which is a wildland fire version of a road torch, a road flare. It's a little bit different because it drips. Uh, it, it drips uh, phosphorus or whatever's in there and helps to ignite. So this is something we carry on us all the time in our packs um, that you could do a burnout with lots of different things. But we use these in combination with the, the drip torches, but the drip torches are, are much more efficient. Okay, so we'll just open that vent there a little bit. We'll see if we can start this up. These are really cool, highly effective tools. All right, once the fuel, once it's lit, then if you look here, you can see that there's a little orifice, a little tip on there. And so you pour the, the fuel over, over top that torch and basically you lay a, a line of fire. Let me set the camera up so you can see better. So you can probably see this better here. So if let's say we want to do a burnout or start something, start something going, 
will have, um, you know, you can have a half a dozen uh, firefighters or so going along in a kind of an orchestrated line and dropping fuel. Now this grass here is green and the humidity is really high. It's not going to burn, but I'll tell you what, in uh, uh, what drought conditions, uh, this thing will take take off. And then you control the amount of uh, fuel you want to come out with that vent there. So uh, I'll tell you, I've ran one of these all day before. They get heavy at the end of the day. So once uh, once you're done with it, it's pretty simple. You can just take a glove there and and just kind of crush it out. These gloves have holes in them, that's why I didn't leave it on my hand. Let this cool down and then uh, simply put it back in. So that's a drip torch for you. That's, uh, that's about all there is to, to that. Now uh, we'll go take a look at the fire skid. So this is the uh, fire skid that I built. I guess it's been a couple years ago or so. I didn't build the tank. The tank was intended for that. It's a baffled 300 gallon tank that was uh, from an old fire department that was decommissioned. And I drove, uh, it was about five or six hours from here and, um, and, and bought it from the guy and then you know, built everything on the top up here myself. So uh, as I said, 300 gallons, this is designed to fit in the back of my pickup. And I built uh, in the pallet kind of a system for, I could use the forks on the tractor or my forklift and I can load it up empty, not full. If it's full of water, it's too heavy, but I can easily move it around with the tractor and just sit at the back of my truck. And then I have a, basically my own mobile wildland fire, uh, fire pump. Um, brand new Honda, I bought this new, it was a WH20. It's a um, Honda's high pressure pump. So it's not um, a traditional super high pressure pump like you would find on a, on regular wildland engine, but for a home for a homeowner type of use, it's uh, it's really a good unit. Very durable and not finicky. If you suck up some dirt or something, it's not a problem. Uh, there's a hose reel on the on here with uh, so you got 100 feet, I think a little 125 feet or so of, uh, of rubber hose in one inch, so kind of a fast attack, and then multiple. Uh, outputs here so I can interface with um, agencies because if we have a fire up here you know it could be pressed into service and I have a quarter turn so I can interface with the D DNR or the standard USFS forest service threads that I can go e either way so you got to be flexible extra uh, single jacketed hose on there and I've got lots of hose I'll keep hundreds several hundred feet on uh, the engine or on my truck uh, if I need to Nice thing about this unit is if I needed to, if I needed like an unlimited water supply, more than 300 gallons, I have the ability to, dra to draft with it. This is the hard suction line. This hooks in here. And if I have a water support, water supply like, i.e. like my pond right down there, I could s s drive the empty tank down there, set it up, throw the hard suction into the pond and pump indefinitely. And that way, if we do have a, wild, a fire threatening, that's my plan. I've got enough hose to surround the whole perimeter to reach any of my structures, and I will make a stand uh, with this pump right here. And so that is my plan. So that is the skid unit. So I haven't uh, ran it this year. Luckily, I did drain it so it didn't freeze and crack on me. Uh, let's we're go, We'll take that down to the very lower pasture pond, and we'll see if we can pull a draft, fill it up, and just make sure everything's working uh, before we... Uh, light up a burn. Those of you guys that are fighting fire this year, watch and learn here. You do not want to show up on a fire and not how to know how to do this. I've been really surprised, really surprised, how many guys show up and you put one of these in their hands and they don't, they don't know what to, what to do with it. Undo the brass nut, the keeper, Loose of its storage spot and screw that down until it's tight. Now, seal this good and tight so it doesn't leak all over your gear. Last thing you want is all of your line gear to be soaked in kerosene or diesel and gas. A fire. Close that vent and that won't, won't leak at all. That's bomber now. Some concern in the comments about stuff falling out of here needing a cargo net no no I, I mean I I 
I, I don't drive the tractor fast. I just, uh, walking speed or a little bit more, I'm in not, not that big of a hurry. Why tear it up? Why beat everything up? Just, uh, doesn't make that much difference. So I've had this all over the pasture up and down and, and have driven around a lot the last couple of days and that, nothing's fallen out. It's, uh, it's, um, nothing to worry about. So bad news guys at the beaver pond. I threw my hard section in and I was trying, I was just started it up, I was trying to pull a, uh, pull a draft on here and look what I found. I'm not a pipe fitter, but I'm guessing that that's probably not going to hold a vacuum. That must have happened the same time, that must have happened this winter. Man, I, I thought I had all this winterized. I, I, I guess I'm going to have to take the compressor and blow all that out. I don't know. I mean, I disconnected everything and drained everything, and there was water standing in that valve. Like you can see. Get, get out of my way there. That thing's messing with me here. There was water standing in that valve, that ball valve. It must have been in the closed position holding water in it. And look at it. Boy, what a shame. That's a two inch solid brass valve. That, that's going to be expensive. That was a nice, nice valve. What a shame. It was brand new too. Good grief. I only hope that there's not something 
the check valve didn't freeze down in there, but I drained, I mean, I pulled the plug on the tank, I pulled the plug on the impeller pump, drained everything out. I just don't understand that. I guess you're going to live and learn. I have to be more careful next time. All right, so um, before we do our prescribed burn, I'm going to have to go into town and get one of these guys. Boy, I look at it, it's all just all messed up. All right, well, that's it for today, guys. We'll, we'll hit it again tomorrow. Thanks for watching.